Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Elite Project. How the heck are you? California officials say that the fires are going to get worse. I have to hit the mute button here real quick. Stand by. All right, here we go. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate you joining me this quick edition, this fast update of Leak Project. We're going to discuss also directed energy weapons, smart meters, and what could happen if a hacker got into a smart meter or a smart appliance. We are going to be looking at images of the aftermath of the Santa Rosa fires. We're going to discuss various directed energy weapons, cause and effects, laser, microwave weapons, 4G, 5G, all sorts of different Gs. A tree, I'm going to share with you an image of a tree from Santa Rosa that was actually burning from the inside out. It reminded me of an image that I saw of Lockheed Martin, uh, a, a test they did with a laser weapon where they burnt a hole into a vehicle, into the hood of a vehicle. It was a truck, and you could see that it was, you know, clearly burnt a hole. They using their directed energy laser type technology weapons. Fascinating. That's what it reminded me of. Now, I don't think Lockheed Martin had anything to do with it. It's just interesting to see the type of technologies that can be portrayed that the Department of Defense has been talking about using also the science fiction stuff that we saw 40, 50 years ago is now becoming science reality, has been for years. This is nothing exceptionally new. Um, so we're also going to discuss the how, how, how does this is one thing that really twists my mind a bit here. When you see these images, and I'm going to share an image with you directly uh, from the from a DoD website, uh, you know, public image, and it's it's high resolution, and you see these houses that look like, or locations that I should say, where there were houses, you know, multi million dollar houses. Now they look like small mounds of dust, literally dust in the wind all they are is dust in the wind oh yeah and then across the street you'll see a, a nice tree that doesn't even look like it was affected so my question is how does a wildfire and i'm going to share with you statistics and numbers and data how does a wildfire get so hot and so calculated that it's able to incinerate porcelain how is it able to incinerate glass, windows? I'm going to share with you the temperature from the searches that I've done showing that porcelain, in order to melt porcelain, you need something at 6,000 degrees. Well, how about incinerating porcelain? Then I would think it's got to be even hotter, right? It's not going to turn into like a lava that you can melt and mold. It's going to be like, you know, how do you incinerate something like that? What type of temperature or frequency do you need to do that? So we're going to look at these images. We're going to look at it in detail. I'm going to show you the temperatures that you need to uh, melt glass, to melt porcelain. I'm also going to share data with you on smart meters, the frequencies that smart meters run on. I'm going to share with you different frequencies within the RF spectrum. And we're going to talk a little bit about these differences in radiation, cause and effect, possibilities. And remember, this is all just a big conspiracy out of my grandma's garage. So just a conspiracy, nothing to worry about, nothing to worry about, yet fascinating indeed. We're also going to look at the possibilities of maybe nanoparticulates, amplifiers of sorts, some type of temperature enhancer that could be combined with another element or a frequency to cause an ignition, to cause a spike, to cause it to go extremely hot, you know, and literally incinerate something. But if it doesn't make contact with another element, then it basically stays benign. So were there nanoparticulates being used? Is this a beta test? Is this Agenda 21? Is there a breakaway civilization that's testing the waters that wants that location 
for themselves to rebuild, to get new contracts. You know, was this a smart, here's, here's another possibility. And I don't know how many people have talked about this possibility, but I'm going to share a, a bounty. Now, how's the sound coming in, guys? I want to make sure the sound's okay. What about the possibility of there being a highly evolved and, and put together you know, a militarized hack from another country? You know, North Korea, China, I don't know. I mean, is, there, is that a possibility? Is it a possibility that literally a breakaway civilization, like I said a moment ago, decided to do it? Are they testing some time? I mean, are they able to use smart meters and smart appliances? I'm going to share with you articles that have been around for several years since 2011, talking about how hackers can get into smart meters and turn them into like mini bombs, cause them to melt down, cause them to explode, be able to get data from them. So this... I would see as more of a concentrated attack though. I don't think that this is from just, you know, a, a hacker that has, uh, you know, that's very intelligent out of their, you know, out of their house or something like that. I see this being a militarized type situation. Now let's look at some of the other possibilities. So what will this do now? Or, you know, here's another possibility. Could, now, this is, this is going even further out there. Could there have been a rogue artificial intelligence that has become self-aware and is now a non-biological intelligence with access to the world's electronic devices and systems, and it decides to play war games? It decides to test the waters. You know, what is the aftermath of this situation? I'm going to share with you an article in a moment, some excerpts from the LA Times. Well, there's going to be new laws. There's going to be new bills, new money trails new opportunities for real estate and those that are in the game or know someone that knows someone that knows someone that helps run the game. What are we going to see unfold? Well, let me read this to you from the LA times countless research papers, government reports have said, you know what? These wildfires in Northern California, are a big deal and they're going to get worse. And they were, you know, supposedly people were warned about this, but wildfires, I think they need to take the wildfires out of the equation. Now, climate change, <laughs> this is their, what, what they're saying. Climate change is fueling larger, more frequent and more devastating wildfires. Hello, Captain Obvious. Well, what is the culprit of the climate change? What is the real main culprit of the climate change? Could it have anything to do with the 76% or I'm sorry, 74% of the stratosphere that's been depleted due to these giant blanketing applications to keep the earth at a certain temperature? Of course not. So what they're saying has to be done is communities have to start making themselves safer now. Now, here's where the numerology comes in play, folks. Tell me if you pick up on this. Two of the three largest wildfires in California's history have happened in the last four years and 42 victims died in the most recent California fire, at least according to this article. Two, three, four, 42. Hello. Think there's a little bit of a numerology spin there? Well, it's interesting. Now, as higher temperatures, droughts create more fires, models actually now are predicting that the property damage is going to get worse in wildland urban areas. Foothills, forests are open land, creating roughly 6% of the states, you know, falls into the state, about 6% of it is what I just mentioned. And most of this is in Southern California and the Bay Area, hmm, you don't say, and the Sierra foothills. So with that in mind, this is a direct quote, starting this year, cities and counties, nanny, nanny, cities and counties are required by state law to develop policies to address the risks and climate change. To their communities. So latimes.com, I'll leave the link in the video description box. You can also read about it at Yahoo. I'm going to share with you the tree here in a moment that literally is burning from the inside. 
So let's talk about this for a minute. Now that this catastrophe has unfolded, you know what they say, don't let any crisis go to waste. Don't let any crisis go to waste. Think of the new bills. Think of the new laws. Think of the new regulations. Oh, now the houses are going to have to have this new product. Okay, well, what institutions are going to profit off of this new product? Who's going to have their hands in the cookie jar? Where is this going to go? Is this going to cause the real estate to go up in value, to go down in value? Are there going to be, is it going to cause a state of emergency where the, you know, the government can usurp up swaths of land? These are all questions that I ask. Now, now I'd like to share with you, let's take a look at this image here in high resolution. Let me share this with you right now. Okay. And there's already a helicopter flying over my house. Yes. Nanny, nanny, nanny. We come in peace. That's what they'd be saying, right? <laughs> we come in peace. All right. So let's take a look at this. This fire certainly didn't come in peace. We just look at it. These houses that were once there, very nice homes, although I would hate to live out there because, first of all, do you want to be a foot away from your neighbor? And, and anyway, you know, spending having a multi million dollar mortgage and you're five feet away from your neighbor, that doesn't sound like much fun to me, but hey, some people are into that kind of stuff. So that's fine. Thank goodness everybody doesn't think the way I do. But look at this. We just look at it. Look at how these houses are just obliterated. There's literally mounds of dust. This isn't your typical forest fire. This isn't your typical wildfire. Now, when you get into the temperatures required to melt glass, you're talking up to about 2,800 degrees. Porcelain, how many tubs were incinerated? How many bathtubs? How many, how many floors full of porcelain tile are literally incinerated? Well, according to the research, and I'll share it with you in a minute, that I've done today, 6,000 degrees to melt porcelain. How about incinerated? It's just bizarre. So does that mean you're crazy for questioning how something like this could happen in such a concentrated area and how it appears to change the laws of physics? Is there a chemical engineer that has a doctorate degree or, you know, a, a very solid foundation of education in what types of temperatures are required to do this kind of damage. Or maybe we could get a firefighter on the show. I'd love to have a firefighter on the show. That'd be great. Somebody that's been through this. Now, you know, as, as we travel here, bird's eye view, let's just take a, take a look here. And you can see some of these cars. Looks like parts of the cars were obviously extremely damaged from the fires. I get that. But the way that some of the cars were damaged is what I question here. As far as the, the fire damage, the burn damage goes. It's very odd. Now, let's, let's zoom out here. Notice how this section right here, let's, let's go right over here for a second. It's interesting how these houses doesn't even look like they were affected right here. And just right around them, you can see this, this trail of ash. Now, there's a tub. Looks like there's, there's a tub right there. So just one tub. I guess everybody else has showers. They don't use porcelain tubs anymore. That's just strange. And then you'll, you'll see other areas where the, you know, once again, the trees look like, ah, oh, no big deal. We weren't here. We missed the memo. We didn't even get the memo. So it didn't affect us. So let's, you know, once again, that makes me question, could there have been some type of nanoparticulates 
that could have been sprayed in, in a certain area, or maybe they're abundant and they're everywhere. And due to specific technologies and being able to manipulate frequencies and actually project these frequencies very fine-tuned, you know, have a very fine-tuned path that they could literally take out blocks, they could take out houses individually, and this is kind of a way to beta test it and then think of all the other things that will go with it. It's like, okay, imagine, you know, this is, once again, these are all just conspiracies. So imagine all the people living for today. <laughs> Whew, I'm starting to get goosebumps here. So imagine a breakaway civilization. Imagine somebody that has all the money they want. They have all the resources they want. They literally have visions of grandeur and somebody isn't playing ball with them. And they've got a very, uh, you know, warrior type mindset. If you don't, if you're not playing ball with me, I'm going to show you. So, you know, okay, fine. You don't want to play ball. We've got this new directed energy weapon we want to test out in a specific area. And yeah, what do we get for it? Well, we're going to wipe it out. We're going to, we're going to start over. We're going to build it from scratch. And then those are, those are going to know those that somewhat know, we're going to know not to mess with those that really know that have the finger on the button that they could push at any time. Could there be some type of smart meter connection with this? Uh, do these houses all have smart meters? do these houses can you activate this via smart meter in conjunction with a transmitter via satellite or tower technologies well i'm going to share with you some stuff in a moment you guys that is even further out than what i'm discussing with you right now yet these are applications and programs that have been in that different factions have been working on for decades, some of them. Some of them are newer, but some of them have been working on for decades. So once again, hey, if I'm if I'm wrong here, if if there's people out there, that are, you know, there, if there's a bunch of people in this area that are like, nope, all of our bathtubs are here, Rex. You, I know you're just not seeing it because the pictures aren't good enough. They're not detailed enough. I only saw one. If there's people like, nope, the glass is just broken. It's not incinerated yet. I've read articles. I've seen plenty of pictures where it doesn't look like the glass is broken. It looks like the glass is gone. It looks like there's no, there's nothing left but dust nothing left but dust yet over here these guys are just fine i mean we just look at it look at those beautiful homes i don't even see do you guys even see any smoke damage those are just shadows you see so right next to this guy Right next door, you've got feet, a few feet of distance there, just obliterated. And then right here, oh, we're good. We're fine. Yep, yeah, no problem. You know what it was? They were using the force. May the force be with you. Hugh, that's what they were doing. They were going, Hugh, and they had this really incredible matrix of protection they created around them and marshmallow man was like blocking them was was blocking the flames and could you imagine how good that would smell marshmallows roasting over a campfire and marshmallow man he can take it because he regenerates he regenerates as so yes, you're, you're getting an opportunity. And there were people that could have actually probably been out there with sticks that could have been like, oh yeah, yeah, give me some, man. And Marshmallow Man, because he's so loving and caring, Marshmallow Man would have been okay, it's good. He's regenerated his own marshmallow awesomeness. And I mean, I guess that would be one thing. So the Marshmallow Man, he, used, he was hanging out in the, uh, in the Atlantic, remember, for the hurricane, but he jumped out to the, the other coast and did what he could, but he got there a little bit late, obviously, got there a little bit late. So, two of the worst storms. No, two out of three of the worst storms in the past four years 
42 people passed. Now let me show you some other stuff here. Stand by. How we doing? People still talking about the flat earth and we're doing a podcast on California. See what I mean? This is, this is what I'm talking about with the flat earth. I, I totally respect your opinion if you believe in the flat earth, but can you just put it away for a minute and discuss something else? It's like the only thing real to some people is the flat earth. Nothing else is real, but the flat earth. Okay, so there you go. The earth's flat, but California got blasted with some type of horrific fire. So can, can you go away with the flat earth, please? Thank you. I appreciate it. For now, if you guys want to talk about it later, that's fine. But right now, you know, let's, let's focus a little bit more on, doesn't matter, it could be square, this is still a big deal. This is still a big deal. There's other things as well that matter. So that's why it just seems like sometimes, sometimes, all right, let's go. Here you go. The earth is not flat. The earth is not flat. The earth is not flat. Just relax. Now you want to talk about something else. Nanny, 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 nanny. The earth isn't flat. The earth's hollow. The earth's hollow. The earth's hollow. All right. There we go. California wildfires are only going to get worse and we're not ready. Well, according to, according to wildfire today, wildfires can get up to 1,472 degrees, 1,472 degrees, forest fires, wildfires. That's pretty dang hot, okay? That's pretty intense. Now, what does it take to burn glass, to melt glass? Well, according to this, the plants sell approximately 90% of the coal at the glass manufacturers who mix it with limestone, soda, ash, and other raw materials that they can melt the mixture by heating it to temperatures of between 1,427 and 1,538 degrees Celsius, which is about 26 to 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait a second. Wait a second. Captain Obvious, can we go back there for a minute? So wildfires, about 1,472 degrees. Yet, that's going to take about twice that to melt glass. About twice that to melt glass. Now, right here, how hot to melt porcelain. <laughs> so, I typed in Google, I typed in how hot does it have to be to incinerate? And then the search engine started like, you know, what, what is it called when it fills out the rest of a sentence that, it, you know, it thinks it knows what you're going to type or it, it's doing that based upon other people's searches or whatever. <laughs> it's like, no, man, I don't want to know that. I want to know about porcelain, man. All right. So <laughs> there's some crazy people out there. Be careful what you search. All right. So how hot to melt porcelain, how hot to melt porcelain, 6,000 degrees, 6,000 degrees. Are you kidding me? So wait, forest fires, 1,472 degrees. How about burning glass? How about double that, about 2,800. Well, when you're getting into porcelain, baby, you better have something pretty serious because you're talking 6,000 degrees. And I am a conspiracy theorist, ladies and gentlemen. How could I question the official version on the brain drain, mind-controlled, mummified caterpillars, zombie media. I need to believe what they tell me because if I don't, somebody might make fun of me. It's like people are more afraid of what their neighbor is going to say about them if they question what's on the media than they are about what's actually going on. Like, how bizarre is that? How bizarre is that? I just, anyway, it's like, I, did you guys know one of the biggest fears is public speaking? One of the biggest fears is public speaking. So if you can make it through Leak Project, if you can make it through, if you ever leave a comment on Leak Project or YouTube, 
youtube.com slash clandestine time lord and you could make it through the comment section by the trolls out there you could make it through just about anything okay this is like boot camp it takes you into that special forces status so welcome to the journey ladies and gentlemen i appreciate you joining me and you know what they say iron sharpens iron still sharpens still we're getting to the level of graphene diamond alloy with mixtures of solar alchemy awesomeness okay right here will you just look at it will you just take a look at this tree i'll leave the link in the video description box so you can see it for yourself if you want to look at it after the podcast that's what the tree looked like burning from the inside man that reminds me of this picture right here directly from lockheed martin directly from lockheed martin harnessing the power of lasers oh yeah baby bingo that's what i'm talking about nanny 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 look at that will you just look at it yeah, that looks kind of like that doesn't it hello so now this is what i want to share with you the jet propulsion laboratory the jpl advanced rapid imaging and analysis team at never a straight answers jet propulsion laboratory in pasadena california and caltech created this damage proxy map showing areas in northern california that are likely damaged that are shown with red and yellow pixels so let me show you now the image of santa rosa showing the areas that were affected by the wildfires <coughs> wildfires yeah wildfires all right in the wild wild west where they can do whatever they want because they got all the money they got all the honey they got all the control they got their fingers on the button i pushed the button and elected him to office he pushed the button and he dropped the that's trent reznor Trent Reznor, lyrics from Trent Reznor's album. Was it Capital G, the name of the album? I don't remember. One of his best albums. No, Some Zero is the name of the album. Some Zero, Trent Reznor. I push the button. Listen to that song. The lyrics are incredible. Absolutely incredible. So let's take a look right now at this image that shows the areas in Santa Rosa affected by the <coughs> wildfire. Wildfire, dude. It was, it was some wildfires, man. Okay, <laughs> sure. Timeshare. Like, look at this. And some of these areas were completely obliterated. So how do wildfires... Uh, okay. Come on, somebody, if there's, if it's wildfires that can start, you know, and, and incinerate bathtubs and windshields and strategically hit specific locations, when did that happen? When did the law of physics change? Did it happen just, was it, I know what it was. It was 2012 that did it. It was 2012 that the Mayans predicted that is why that's why everything changed every it's the demons man demons did it they did it the demons <laughs> oh, okay now now let's get to the i haven't even gotten to the directed energy weapons now you know what people say that wikipedia they're like sometimes they give wikipedia a hard time and i get it and sometimes some you got to remember people can put together articles on wikipedia just like they can on virtually any other website so you can cross reference the information on wikipedia and if you go to the bottom for example i scroll all the way to the bottom here and you've got 89 different sources of information based on this art so this article has 89 different sources of information that created this article so you can go through each one of these and you can look at the different universities. You can look at the different defense contractors. You can look at the white papers. You can look at the data yourselves. And this is a pretty darn good article. So 
I'm going to just share with you. We're going to go through some of this real quick and you guys can decide for yourself what you think. And, you know, that's the, the nice thing about having a brain is you can think for yourself if you want to, or you can just let somebody else decide for you what is good and bad. So it's totally up to you. Directed energy weapons, dues. There's a whole bunch of them. Some of the operational advantages, they can be used discreetly as radiation above and below the visible spectrum is invisible and it doesn't generate sound. You know, light is only very slightly altered by gravity, giving it almost a perfect flat trajectory. It is almost practically immune with anything resembling normal planetary conditions to both windage and something else. <laughs> So this makes aim much more precise and extends range to, to, to line of sight limited only by beam diffraction and spread. They can have much greater speed and range than conventional weapons, and they're suitable for space warfare. Now you've got microwave weapons. That's a part of an EMF, or not, that's a part of a, I guess you call it an electromagnetic frequency weapon or a directed energy weapon. You've got microwave weapons. You've got the active denial system, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory, Raytheon, multitudes of institutions. Check out the ELM Green Pine Radar, making it a possible candidate for conversion into a directed energy weapon. So you could take an effective radiated power of this specific radar and literally convert it into a directed energy weapon by focusing pulses of radar energy on a target missile. You have energy spikes tailored to enter the missile through the antennas or sensors, and then they can fool guidance systems. Then you have what's called an AESA radar that's mounted on fighter aircraft as a direct energy weapon against missiles. Uh, electro lasers, pulsed energy projectiles, dazzlers. Those are directed energy weapons that will either temporarily blind you or disorient you and the target. Uh, they're intense directed radiation weapons. I mean, look at this guy right here, the PHASR rifle. That is a personal halting and simulation response rifle. It is a prototype non-lethal non laser dazzler. Project Excalibur. You've got the Strategic Missile Troops Military Academy developing a handheld laser weapon from 1984 in the Soviet Union. <laughs> I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that gets into this directed energy type weapons. One of the things that's interesting though, I mean, look at this, look at this, plasma weapons, sonic weapons, the LRAD device, those have been being used for years. Now, this is one thing that I wanted to share with you. Mirrors that can be used as weapons. You've seen the article, if you watched the podcast that I did or many others have done on the artificial sun that Germany created, the largest artificial sun that's publicly known about. These artificial suns can emit energy and light as bright as the sun. And it takes the energy of the sun and it can, you know, it can fine tune and direct these things. Imagine giant mirrors in space and optics in the atmosphere that can adjust a little bit and move a little bit, manipulate a little bit, the sun's rays already and focus it directly on certain areas. Could that be a possibility? Were they using some type of sun simulator, some type of combination of? Now, here's one way that they could do it. Take a smart meter, put it on somebody's house. You have a receiver box. You have a box that not only receives information, but also transmits information constantly. It'll turn off. I shouldn't say constantly, so it's, it's not doing it constantly. It'll do, it'll do pulses for a while, then it'll stop. It'll do thousands of pulses in a very short amount of time and then stop. And it'll go, do, 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 do. So it can receive information and it, and it, and it emits information. So it is a location point. It's like a GPS location for something via satellite something in our atmosphere that could actually connect to that point, X marks the spot, bingo, zoosh, just freaking zoosh, zoosh. Imagine like a giant lightsaber and there's just whoosh, whoosh, 
ooh, and houses are just, and they're like jamming out in the background, dust in the wind. You know, they're just freaking going off. They've got some techno mixture there, and they're just, yes, and the Death Star. Conspiracy theorists. All right. Engine stopping rays. I mean, they've been doing stuff since World War II. In the Iraq War, they used electromagnetic weapons, including high-powered microwaves, not only to disrupt and destroy electronic systems in Iraq, but also used for crowd control. They literally made people, special forces in Iraq, crazy, where they were begging to give up their guns. They were running in circles. Helicopters were blasting this music with this weird electromagnetic toxic mixture of frequencies behind it that were freaking people out. And they're like, here you go. <laughs> your high definition TV set, your smartphone, your smart appliance, your smart meter, your neighbor's smart meter. Another thing these smart meters can do is they network with other smart meters. So they're relaying information back and forth to each other, data back and forth constantly. So if you don't have one, you can still feel the effects of your neighbors. And then they come out and say, oh, it's no big deal because it's not even emitting as much radiation. It's not even emitting as much of a frequency as your cell phone, which is true. But your cell phone isn't constantly on next to your head. And if it is, that's not a good idea. I'd recommend getting some headphones that you can plug in. Just a possibility. Actually, you know what? I would recommend doing the research yourself. Do whatever you want. Okay, that's what I do. I don't like to talk on my cell phone. It feels like you're just like, radiate, radiate. So let's talk about this right now. Tons of articles from Google. And I've got an interview in 15 minutes with Gil Brassard, so make sure to stay tuned because if you guys want to hear about some great information that Gil is going to present to the table here first, make sure to be here at 6 p.m. Central Time, 18 minutes. So we're going to have to close this up here pretty soon. Don't let me forget. Hackers could turn your smart meter into a bomb. The register.co.uk smart electricity meters can be dangerously insecure. The Guardian ZDNet smart meter hacking tool released. Oh, that's fantastic. Hacking for privacy. Two days for amateurs to hack into a smart meter. Oh, they've even got videos on how to do it. That's wonderful. Smart meters can be hacked to cut power bills. BBC News. Well, what else can they be used for? They can be used for a multitude of things that I just mentioned. Now, this is directly from EMF Safety Network. This is from uh, an article in the Santa Rosa Press. PG&E gets earful over smart meters in Santa Rosa hearing. The WHO classified radio frequency radiation as a 2B carcinogen, same as DDT and lead. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? OF radiation is a to be carcinogen, same as DDT and lead. Hey, I figured if I sound like Homer Simpson, maybe some people will hear me a little bit better. It's classified as a carcinogen, and they put these towers that emit mass amounts of radiation, high levels of RF radiation frequencies, next to daycares. Schools, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, apartment complexes. Smart meters explode, cause fire in Santa Rosa Mall. Stopsmartmeters.org. Fire at 160 Santa Rosa. Three PG&E smart meters explode at Santa Rosa Mall. Those are all from EMF Safety Network. See what else we got here. We just look at it. Oh, what is this? Well, let's take a look at this real quick, shall we? Did we just check it out? What do you think, man? EMF's so good for you. Everybody's doing it. I just love it. A smart meter device that you cannot turn off 
Okay, I'll leave the, I'm leaving the links for all this, the video description box. Stopsmartmeters.org. A smart meter is a device you cannot turn off or move. So your exposure to the source of the RF is out of your control. The rate and intensity of the RF radiation is also not under your control. Recent information off the record from PG&E confirms their suspicion that at least 90% of the RF emitted by the smart meter doesn't even, it, it is not transmitting your electrical usage data, but it's part of the mesh network. It's talking to itself, it's talking to itself. So what frequencies do they operate at? What sort of radiation do they emit? Well, they're, the PG&E Silver Springs Network smart meter operates in the 902 to 928 megahertz range. Remember the Earth's natural hertz Schumann resonance is about 7.68 hertz, 7.68. A megahertz is a million hertz. So they're operating in the 9 million hertz range. Now, radio frequency microwave range of most cell phones is anywhere from 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. There's also two millisecond spikes of RF radio frequency emitted randomly assigned to a pattern of altering frequencies. The pulses continue to shift with frequencies that they're using. At least 90% of the pulses are not your data, but the mesh network's data talking to itself, network chatter. Uh, these spike pulses are like strobe lights, which emit spike pulses of about a half millisecond each. The smart meter pulses can go off at a rate of two to 20 per second. Strobe lights are known to have neurological effects and are not allowed to be sold if they strobe at a rate above 10 pulses per second. Some people cannot be around strobe lights. They're visually trigger, triggered seizures by the strobe lights. The smart RF meters constitute an all new bizarre pattern, unlike the pattern of emissions from your cell phone or any other RF emitting device. So some research indicates that pulse radiation induces a greater biological effect than constant radiation. Now let's go look at this. This is directly from WHO International. This is from WHO, and they really love us. Pulsed RF fields, exposure to very intense pulsed RF fields similar to those used by radar systems has been reported to suppress the star and startle the response and evoke body movements in conscious mice. In addition, people with normal hearing have perceived, perceived pulse RF fields with frequencies between about 200 megahertz and 6.5 gigahertz. This is called the microwave hearing effect. This sound has been variously described as a buzzing, clicking, hissing, popping sound, depending on the RF pulsing characteristics, prolonged or repeated exposure may be stressful and should be avoided where possible because they love you so much, they don't want you to avoid it. RF shocks and burns at frequencies less than 100 megahertz. RF burns or shocks may result from charges induced on metallic objects situated near radars. Persons standing in RF fields can also have high local absorption of the fields in areas of their bodies with small cross-sectional areas, such as the ankles, in general, because of the higher frequencies that most modern radar systems operate. Combined with their small beam widths, the potential for such effects is very small. So, all right. Now, let's leave it at this. Be excellent to each other. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of what's going on. The more research you do, the better off you're going to be if you want to know. And those that know, want to know more. Those that don't know, don't even care to know because they wouldn't know even if no gave them the no. You know? So have a beautiful day. Make sure to join me here again in 10 minutes. Be excellent to each other. Support our sponsors, getthetea.com. Getthetea.com for the best in organic supplements. I'm taking this stuff called colostrum and wow, amazing. I love this stuff. Also, I'm taking these pills called GI Joy. I'm taking two a day, one in the morning, one at night. 
Um, you can get a whole two month supply for less than 40 bucks. It's got organic colostrum, turmeric, probiotics, aloe, and it is amazing. So get the tea.com, check it out. You'll thank me later. When you check out, use the code leak project, be the change you want to see. That's my shameless plug. Nanny, nanny, nanny. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>